We're a couple of weeks into term two, your math stacks are probably coming up. So I thought I'd share my three-step process for preparing for these math tests. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Darren, a first year medical student studying at Monash University here in Melbourne, Australia. At the time of recording, I have a clinical skills examination this afternoon, so hopefully my voice doesn't give out until then. As with today's video, I'll be showing my three-step process for preparing for math sacks. Um, if you haven't checked out my top three tips for math video, please give that a watch. Um, it's a bit different to this video. Those tips are more general and broad for the math subjects as a whole. Whereas this is um, a really structured three-step process um, that I use to prepare for my math tests. So as to the layout of this video, it will be split into three parts. Firstly, understanding the concept. Um, secondly, uh, doing practice questions from the textbook. And thirdly, doing practice sacks. And that's also the order of the steps that I completed them in. Enjoy. Now, the first thing I will do is to try and understand the concept. Now, doing a few practice questions can help. Um, but generally, I try and understand the concepts before I tackle like a large amount of questions uh, because then you might be tackling them with some misconceptions. So in terms of what I mean by understanding the concept, it's um, understanding the why behind why you're learning it and also being able to put into words what something is. So for example, with anti-differentiation, it's pretty useful because I can give you a derivative, um, like uh, the expression or the equation of a derivative, and you can give me the general form of the original graph. You can tell me it might look like this, but just translate it up or down. And then all you need is a single point to be able to find um, what the graph is. Um, and as for things like tangents, um, it's good to know and put into words that, okay, what is a tangent? Well, it is a line um, which passes through a point on a, on a graph. And at that point, it also has the same gradient as well. So being able to put into words and to really um, digest and understand what these concepts are is really important. Um, as to how long this step should take, generally, um, it didn't take as long as I spent on, say, doing practice questions or practice acts. Um, but it does vary a bit from concept to concept. Some people find um, you know, tangents and antiderivatives really easy and find statistics really hard. And for some people, they might find other areas difficult. So really, it's as long as you need to feel comfortable with the topic. So you don't feel like, okay, this topic is so weird, um, so random, why am I learning this? I'm just like throwing in maths, it's gonna be useless to me. Um, once you sort of understand the um, use of it and why you're doing it and you feel comfortable with the topic rather, it, rather than it being something alien, um, that's when I think it's fine to move on to doing a lot of practice questions. And just to mention another benefit of being able to understand the concept is that it helps you with applying it to questions as well. For example, a tangent, when you really think about it, all you need is a gradient and a point. Um, that's all you need to be able to find a tangent, um, or you can have you know, two points as well. But that means any question that requires you to find a tangent or in your working out you need to find a tangent, then you can really zoom in on just those two factors. Okay, I need two points, or I need a gradient and I need a point. That's all I need. And once you've found those, you can use them. Whereas if you didn't have a good understanding of tangents, you'd be sort of fumbling around like, okay, what, what do I kind of need? Do these numbers fit? Do these numbers fit? But once you identify that, as long as, as, long as you identify the, you know, the essential components of finding a tangent, then all you need to do is just zoom in and find those components. If they're there, done, you can find a tangent. If they're not, maybe you did something wrong with your working out and you need to revise that. So I think having a really good understanding of the topic um, allows you to be much more clinical um, and much more efficient in your working out. The second part of the process is to do questions from the textbook. Now questions from the textbook are really good for practicing your accuracy um, and also your speed because these questions are quite repetitive. They get you to find you know, derivatives of 10 types of expressions um, and to find the tangent at all these various types of graphs. So I think they're really good for um, practicing the concepts and implementing them that you've just learned. Um, and also because in maths, Generally, they, yeah, they just don't ask you to find the derivative um, a lot of the time. Usually, you have to find the derivative as part of your working out for some broader question. And so, rather than like a big focal point, these questions are like the supporting pillars. They're, um, they're skills that you should be able to do as second nature to support your answer for the broader question. Um, sort of like a high school version of times tables. 
So once again, it's sort of a feeling as to when you should stop. I think a mistake a lot of people make is that they labor too much over the textbook questions. They try and do every single one because of how paranoid they are. Um, but I think you should really trust yourself. And once you get to a point where you're comfortable with the questions, you're getting them right, you're doing them at a quick speed, and it really does feel like times tables, um, then it's not that worthwhile doing a ton more, uh, more so moving on to step three, uh, which is doing questions in practice sacks and practice exams. So the last step of the process is to do practice sacks and practice exams. Um, as to practice exams, they're a bit different. I'll be talking about them later. Um, with practice sacks, you usually don't have like a ton. Um, I think our school had five. So it's not good to do them extremely early. And I also think that practice sacks are great as a way of um, finding out your timing, testing out your timing, and maybe identifying a couple areas, like um, a very small areas that you're weak in. But I really don't think they're good as screening tests. If you like, if you don't feel fully prepared and you just want to find out what you don't know, I don't recommend using practice tests because um, of how valuable they are. And um, with practice sacks, spread them out over the last one or last two weeks over uh, right before your actual sack. Um, because then it um, sort of builds up to your actual sack and also because um, you likely might not have mastered all the content before that period of time. I would usually have do my last practice sack um, two days before the actual sack um, just so I don't, um, well, like it, it's two days because um, then I don't lose a lot of my sharpness that I've developed and it's also two days because um, I don't like doing sacks, uh, practice sacks really close to the actual sack date because if you do find out um, something wrong, then you, you have time to fix it and you don't get too stressed out over it um, if you have that time period before the actual sack. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's video. From what I've heard, it's starting to get a bit more stressful. A lot of people have like a sack a week for the next eight weeks. Um, so yeah, hopefully uh, this has helped alleviate some of your stress and um, has given you some ways to, some concrete ways of preparing for your sacks. If you have any um, recommendations for topics you'd like me to cover, please leave them in the comments box below. Good luck for your assessments and I look forward to seeing you all next time.